Every hour, millions of students pass through school hallways on a journey to new discoveries and experiences. Keeping order in this chaos can be a challenge if not taken seriously. When walking in hallways, use the right side of the hall to help with the flow of traffic. Avoid gathering in groups, particularly in the middle of main thoroughfares, as this creates traffic congestion. Walking in large groups can also lead to traffic buildup. Instead, walk in pairs on the right side of halls to allow oncoming traffic through. Be aware of your surroundings. Make sure you are not blocking access to lockers. All electronics should be safely stowed away in your locker. Headphones, earbuds, and AirPods should also be put away and not in your ears while passing through the halls. Food and beverages should also stay in the designated cafeteria zone during the morning and lunch hours. During class times, passes are required when traveling through the hallways. Make sure you fill out your pass with date, time leaving, and destination. Politely request your leave to the teacher. Remember, it is not your right to leave the class, and you must get permission from your teacher. The hallways of a school can be a daunting gauntlet of distractions and impediments, but with the right attitude and actions, we can make the hallway a comfortable commute to our next destination. Be ready, be responsible, be respectful, be royal! and available through the RMS website or directly at johnstons.com. Guarantee your copy in case they sell out. This afternoon there will be a career lunch as a pilot from FedEx will be stopping by to talk about their job, grab your lunch, and head to the media center. It's not too late to sign up for the RMS trip to Washington, D.C. 7th and 8th graders still have time to get in on this trip. Deadline is February 6th. See your social studies teachers for details. We are halfway through the school year as third quarter starts today. Make sure to check your quarter classes. Good morning, Rogers Middle School. It's Mrs. Whiting here with another Mindful Moment, and today we're gonna to continue our discussion about the glitter ball. Last time, we talked about how the glitter in the ball represents our thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. And we said that even when it's good glitter, too much glitter can sometimes be a problem for us. But my question for you is this, how do you know when you have too much glitter? In just a moment, we're gonna watch a short video of many of our students and staff who shared how glitter shows up for them. Check it out. Too much glitter can be overwhelming. Uh, when I have uh, a lot of my plate or I'm being pulled in many different directions. When my glitter looks like this, I get headaches. I get butterflies in my stomach. I get impulsive. I get talkative. I do too. I know when I'm feeling like this when I overthink things. And I don't want to feel like this when I start getting really sensitive. When I get like this, I know when I'm frustrated and angry. Too much glitter also shows up as anxiety, stomach aches, and trouble sleeping. Thanks everybody for helping us answer the question of, how do we know when we have too much glitter? Did you realize that just answering that question is being mindful? It's true, because being mindful just means that we're paying attention to the here and now. Now my next question for you is this, so then what? You notice that you've got glitter, what are you gonna do about it? We've talked quite a bit about how the breath can help us settle, 
but that's not the only strategy that we can use, and I know that many of you have a lot of other ways that you like to settle your glitter. So we are gonna turn it back over to you, and you're gonna share some strategies that work for you. I like to listen to music. I like to rest. I like to give myself quiet time. Reading settles my glitter. I like to chill and watch Netflix. I like to work out and walk my dogs. And I like to ice fish and cook. We play sports. I use humor and laughter to settle my glitter. To settle my glitter, I talk to teachers that I trust. I stay realistic. I make a list and I start tackling those things one by one. So there you have it. If you've got a lot of glitter, being mindful means that you're paying attention to how the glitter shows up for you, and then you're choosing how you respond. Now there's just one more thing that I wanna point out for you, and it's this. Some of you may have just one main thing that you do when you're trying to settle the glitter, and others of you may have several strategies. Either way, we can always learn more, and that's one of the reasons that we do these mindful moments, so that we can learn new strategies for settling our glitter.